Business owners and entrepreneurs are selling products and services to the U.S. government, doubling, tripling, and sometimes exponentially increasing their annual revenue. But not all companies are successful selling to the government. There's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. I'm here to help companies of all sizes actually succeed with government sales and start winning contracts. I'm Richard Howard, and this is Government Sales Momentum. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the Government Sales Momentum podcast slash video. I'm Richard Howard. Today we're covering a topic that a lot of my uh, clients and uh, consulting clients have brought up, especially if they've been selling to the government for a while or trying to, and if they're frustrated, often they'll make the comment, this looks like it's rigged or government contracts look like they're rigged or just our competitors have such an advantage. How can we break in there? So the short answer is no, they're not rigged. There's thousands of pages of regulations and laws that prevent that type of thing and and punish those that do try to uh, do something illicit or try to influence in an illegal way. But from a small business perspective, especially it can, especially if you're new to uh, the federal marketplace, it can definitely appear that there is some type of unfair advantage or some underhanded dealing going on. And there's a few there's a few reasons small businesses may think that, right? So I've talked to uh, over a couple hundred companies in our consulting practice, and here are some of the comments that they will bring to me. Hey, you know we're writing proposals all the time and we're not winning anything. Or, hey, it looks like the same companies are winning over and over again. Or your direct competitor seems like they're winning. Or for a company that's really, really paying attention to the details of what the solicitations look like, they'll say things like, hey, it looks like this request for proposal, request for quote was written for our competitor. It looks like it was written for exactly what they do, the certifications they have, the technologies they have. Like, how is that possible? And they're winning it. This is rigged. So why does it appear that way? Why is that happening? Well, the first thing, there's really two things going on there, right? But it all comes down to your strategy and how you're approaching the federal marketplace. So these companies that are winning over and over again, they're really just copying what the big defense and government contractors are doing and have been doing for decades. And this isn't really written anywhere. It's not uh, published that this is how what you're supposed to be doing, but they're all doing it. And it's perfectly legal. And it comes down to the fact that they're not engaging with the government for the first time when an RFP comes out. So if you're seeing uh, an RFP or an RFQ drop on SAM.gov, or if you're on a GSA contract and you're getting sent uh, you know, solicitations that you could potentially bid on, if that's the first time you're engaging with the government, your odds of success are extremely, extremely low. Not saying you can't win, right? You, you can't um, predict everything that's going to come out. You know, At some point, you're going to see an RFP or an RFQ that looks like it's perfect for your company. And if you think you have a relationship with the organization or just you're such a good fit that, you know, makes sense for you to put your proposal together, go ahead. But what companies are doing is they're identifying opportunities six months, a year out, sometimes for especially larger projects, years in advance, establishing relationships with those offices and then influencing requirements, right? So let's talk about the the RFP solicitation that you saw come out looks like it was written for your competitor and then they win it. Has to be rigged, right? No. So in fact, what probably happened there, and this happens all the time, is six months, a year before that solicitation ever came out, there was probably a request for information where sources saw it. Now your competitors, I guarantee, are responding to those, right? Now all companies aren't responding to RFIs and sources saw it, but the smart ones are. And when they respond to something like that, There aren't a lot of rules governing that the way that a RFP, um, it is with an RFP. So if a request for proposal comes out, you are bound by what they're asking for. And it's very specific. You need to submit everything on time. You have to really pay attention to the details and be thorough in really not only answering um, what the request for proposal is asking for, but really hitting the nuance of what you think the organization needs. But when we're talking about an RFI source of thought, the government's fishing for information. They're trying to figure out how to get that solicitation out there. Can it be set aside for a small business? What are the requirements going to be? Because remember, 
the contracting officers and program managers aren't the experts in your field, right? If it's a solicitation for construction or building a satellite or, you know, whatever it is, you're the expert at that if that's what you provide. And so they're looking for requirements. They're looking for, uh, you know, are you a veteran owned small business, woman owned small business? Can they even make this a small business set aside? Does it need to be um, competed for everyone? How many people are actually responding to this? Like how many people out there, how many companies can actually respond um, and put a proposal in, you know, if, if it's only one company, then that might uh, indicate to the government that this needs to be a sole source contract to the one company that does this one thing. Now, your competitor sees this RFI, you know, for I'm going to say satellite building just for the sake of the podcast here. And what they're doing is they're answering the questions, you know, hey, maybe timelines, contract recommendations, specific, there might be some specific questions about the technology. But in addition to that, what they're doing is they are suggesting requirements and probably writing to them as they would appear in the solicitation itself saying, hey, we recommend these types of certifications. And you better believe they're recommending the certifications that their company holds. We recommend that this technology be put into the satellite that you're wanting to build. Again, everything they're recommending is going to be what that company does specifically. And their goal, your competitor's goal is to push you out of the equation. They want to make sure that the requirements that appear in that solicitation are so specific to what they do that they're eliminating competition. And further, if they have a set aside, if they happen to be a, we'll say a veteran owned small business, you better believe they're recommending to the government that they set this aside for a veteran owned small business. What does that do? Well, that eliminates everybody else that's not a veteran owned small business if it actually comes out uh, to be that set aside. Some other things they might recommend. If they're using a GSA contract uh, to sell to the government, or maybe they're on one of the big GWACs, right? Like maybe they're on NASA Soup or CIO SP3 or you know, whatever it is, they might recommend to the government, hey, for ease of use, you can uh, we're on this contract vehicle. We recommend that you use this contracting mechanism to put uh, companies on contract. Now, what happens, right? Let's say it's NASA Soup. And they've convinced not only the requirements, the the, um, the requirements that are going to be in the solicitation. So uh, not only have they influenced that, but they've also recommended that it's going to be on NASA soup. So when the RFP comes out and you're seeing it for the first time, you see, first of all, a bunch of requirements that are very specific to your competitor. You're like, oh, that looks like it was written for him. And then the caveat, oh, we intend to use uh, uh, to award this on NASA soup and you're not on NASA soup. Well, now you're out of the game, right? You, if you want to go after that opportunity, you need to partner with a company that's on NASA Sioux. So you can see that you can influence dramatically the requirements that are going to go into something like this. Additionally, you know, these companies are always trying to set up meetings with the program management team that's associated with the effort. So very common, a company may set up a meeting before or after an RFI response um, to discuss the details, to let the program management team know uh, about the company and to learn, right? Hey, what do you really, what is really the details of your problem set that you're trying to solve? So instead of guessing, you can get the RFI, the sources sought, some of the published information, then set up a meeting with a PM. And now you're really going to have an in-depth understanding of what the problem set is for the government. And you can make a valid attempt at trying to solve that. And you're just going to increase your odds dramatically of actually winning that contract. So in essence, government contracts, they're not rigged for the most part, right? But there's some gray area as far as how you can influence them, right? So you just want to do that legally. There's, and I absolutely recommend talking to a lawyer if you're um, getting involved with government sales, government contracting, uh, because there are a lot of regulations and laws in the, about how you sell in the federal marketplace and what's allowed and what's not allowed that don't exist commercially in B2B or B2C sales. So hopefully that was helpful. Government sales are not rigged, but there is a tremendous amount of gray area and a whole strategy that companies that are successfully doing this to influence in a legal way the uh, solicitation. So when uh, they come out, they're just going to be set up for a greater degree of success. All right. Thanks for listening. Feel free to reach out. We're at richardchoward.com. Take care. Thank you.